As I already discussed two slides ago, sugars can cyclize back and forth between their open chain and ring forms in two different ways. <clears throat> One is by putting the OH going down. So you can see if this oxygen closes on the anomeric carbon in a way that points the OH going down, we get one form. And the other is pointing the OH up. And as I did say two slides ago, these two uh, rings, one and two, are called anomers of each other. This process of going back and forth in equilibrium between these two rings is called muta rotation. And of course, carbon one is called the anomeric carbon. Now this brings up an important point. I need to teach you this principle called alpha versus beta sugars. You'll notice if we look at this uh, anomer one, that the OH here, the anomeric OH, is pointing down. And this CH2OH that's dangling off of carbon five in the ring is pointing up. These two groups, the CH2OH up here and this OH down here, are trans to each other in this anomer. In this anomer over here, the CH2OH is pointing up, and this OH is pointing up also. So these two groups are cis to each other. Now, as it turns out, we have a name for this. If you have an anomer where the uh, anomeric OH is trans to the CH2OH in the pyranose form, it is called an alpha anomer. If you have the anomer where the CH2OH and the OH are cis to each other, they are called beta anomers. This principle is going to become very important shortly when I talk and refer to alpha sugars versus beta sugars. And this brings us to a magical question. How can I, on paper, go back and forth between open chain and ring forms of carbohydrates? In other words, if I'm given open chain, structure of a sugar like this one shown here for d mannose and if my teacher asks me to draw it in its ringed form can i do it and if so how well i'm disappointingly not going to give you the answer to this question here but i promise you that we will do it together as a class to prepare for that however i'm going to direct you to the latter portion of section 12 from this chapter in your text can you take this open chain form of d mannose and draw it in its ringed pyranose form? Can you? I'll let you try. And now we arrive at this magical word called glycoside. Glycoside. The killing of glyco... Uh, yeah, so anyway, there's this magical reaction that we can do to selectively replace an anomeric OH with an OR group, where R is an alkyl group. So in this example that I have here, we replace the OH with a methoxy group by treating this sugar with methanol and acid. What we end up getting is two different isomers one being alpha, where these two groups are trans. That's how I remember alpha, by the way. Trans has an A in it. Alpha, ans, trans. And these two are cis to each other, so beta. These compounds are called glycosides. Now, glycosides, in reality, are really just carbohydrate acetals. If you can't remember what an acetal is, please review chapter 18. Now I'm going to show you the mechanism by which glycosides are formed. You might remember to form a glycoside, I take my sugar, I treat it with an acid, and then I eventually treat it with an alcohol, and I replace the OH with an OR, where R is an alkyl chain. The mechanism by which this proceeds is the following. The anomeric OH reaches out and steals a proton from the acid to generate this protonated form. At this stage, this anomeric oxygen right here thrusts its electrons down in here to form a double bond and kicks off water as a leaving group. That gives me this intermediate. Now look at this intermediate. I've got this oxygen that has three bonds and a positive charge. This carbon right here is obviously going to be a very hot spot for nucleophilic attack. 
So at this stage, my alcohol, whatever alcohol I've happened to choose, can come in and attack and form a bond at this carbon, and upon doing so, push these electrons back into this oxygen to neutralize the charge. Once again, you can imagine this OH can come from either direction, the top or the bottom. If it comes from the top, then it ends up giving us this intermediate. And eventually, that will get deprotonated to give me my beta glycoside. Once again, the beta anomer is where these two groups are cis to each other. Now you can just as easily imagine the alcohol coming in from underneath to form a bond. And if it comes in from underneath, then we get this isomer, and this isomer will eventually get deprotonated to form this alpha glycoside. Alpha glycoside, strangely, are the major product, even though they have an axial OR group instead of an equatorial. I'm not going to tell you in too much depth as to why. It's caused by something called the anomeric effect, but it is interesting to note. Now, there are several polysaccharides that are extremely important and essential to life on our planet. One of these is starch, which is technically a mixture of two different polysaccharides, amylose and amylopectin. So starch, once again, is a sugar mixture that's made up of 20% amylose and 80% amylopectin. While I don't require you to know the structures of amylose and amylopectin for memory, I do want to show them to you so that you can say that you've seen them. Here's the structure of amylose. As you can see, amylose is a polymer of multiple glucose molecules all bound together in a 1, 2, 3, 4. So a 1 to 4 relationship with this oxygen pointing down. You'll notice, uh, notice this oxygen is trans to the CH2OH, therefore this is an alpha linkage. So once again, amylose is a glucose polymer of one, four alpha linked glucose molecules. Here's the structure of amylopectin. Amylopectin is a glucose molecule that has branch points at position one, position four, and also on this CH2OH, this oxygen is bonded periodically to other glucose molecules at position one. Can you see that? So it's got a little bit more branching than we have in amylose. So here's amylopectin. One thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that amylopectin also has all alpha linkages. So you'll notice that every one of these oxygens is trans to the CH2 at carbon six. They're trans, therefore they're alpha. You see that? So this is amylopectin's structure. I want to just reiterate, starch is actually a mixture of 20% amylose and 80% amylopectin.